greet you in the name of the Lord. So thankful for life spared to another broadcast time. This service, the Way of Truth broadcast, originates in the radio studios of the Church of God in Hagerstown, Maryland, United States of America. This is Alvin Craig inviting you to stay with us, trusting the Lord will make our broadcast a blessing to you today. Our Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for the privilege of being one of the sheep in the shepherd's fold. And we realize and we know that that's possible only because of your love and in the giving of your Son. So we give you thanks and we give you praise. We thank you for the opportunity of sharing the gospel with this precious congregation today. And we're trusting the Holy Spirit will be able to use us and use our broadcast service to be a blessing to precious souls. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to share with you an encouraging letter that we received and appreciate very much. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Thank you so much for the inspiration and direction I receive from your broadcast over the shortwave radio. I no longer listen to AM or FM radio, for there is just no information that I can use. I look forward to each new broadcast, and the choir is just fantastic. I love the music and hymns of praise that I hear on shortwave. And that comes to us from Ohio. 
helped, and we appreciate it very much. We would be grateful if others of you would take time to let us know that you hear and appreciate our broadcast, and we'll be giving you our mailing address at the close of today's broadcast, the Lord willing. Our subject for today's broadcast, Called, Sanctified, Preserved. And our text of Scripture is the first verse of the little book of Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. So in this verse of Scripture, we have these three words, called, sanctified, preserved. In several passages throughout the New Testament, we find serious warnings about impending apostasy. Jesus warned that false prophets would arise and the love of many would wax cold. And only those who remain true would be saved. Paul said, after his departing, men would arise speaking perverse things 
to draw away disciples after them. We find this in Acts chapter 20 and verses 29 and 30 when he was charging the elders of the church at Ephesus to take heed unto themselves and unto all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made them overseers to feed the church of God which Christ had purchased with his own blood. Peter warned about the rise of false teachers and said many would follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. We should not be surprised that the same dangers exist today. There are three points, again, I wish to deal with in our text today. And the first one is called. Those who are called. Those in Christ have been called. Everyone who is a Christian today has been called. Jesus said, No one can come unto me except the Father which has sent me. Follow them or seek them or call them. And we have been called with a holy calling. So we read in Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Now this calling was not because of our good works. It was not because we were worthy or deserving. It was according to God's own purpose and grace. And this call came through the gospel. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we read in Paul's letter to the church of Thessalonica, chapter 2 and verse 14, By having the gospel preached to every creature, the call is made available to all. And I do emphasize the fact that the call is made to all, and all can come if they will but heed the call. We read in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, where Jesus instructed the church and said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So this call is to everyone. God is no respecter of persons. God would that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Again, the Apostle Paul speaking or writing, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. So the commission to the church was, and I believe still is, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Our responsibility, having accepted the call, is to make our calling and election sure. Yes, the call comes from God, not because we are worthy or deserving, but because of his love. But whenever we respond to the call and accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, I say our responsibility, having accepted the call, is to make our calling and election sure. There are things that we must do. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things... You shall never fall. Now we read in First Peter, or Second Peter rather, 1 and 10, these words. And in verses 4 through 8 of this chapter in Second Peter, he enumerates a number of things that we must add to. We must add to grow in our Christian experience, we must add to faith, we must add to virtue, we must add to knowledge, we must add to temperance, we must add to patience, we must add to godliness and brotherly kindness and love. 
For again, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Peter said, and if these things be in you, then you shall not fall, you shall not fail. So there are things that we must do once we have received the call and responded to it. We do have responsibilities to work out our own salvation, to labor, to obey, to be doers of the word, and not just hearers only. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And James said, Let us be doers of the word, and not hearers only. For if we're only a hearer and not a doer, then we deceive ourselves. Now the second word in our text today, Jude 1, that I want to call your attention to is the word sanctified, sanctified by God the Father. Now the word sanctification has various meanings, such as to make holy, to set apart, for a special purpose, and so forth. Russell Byram said in his book this, The Greek hegios is derivative, is derivative or properly translated by the following English words in their various forms, sanctify, holy, pure, chaste, and clear. Now, on entire sanctification, defined by Byram, we read, as a definite cleansing, subject to conversion from the depravity of the nature, which condition remains in the regenerated until the time of this entire sanctification, a work contemporary with the Holy Spirit's baptism. Now, I realize there are many in the religious world who do not think that sanctification is a separate work apart from regeneration, but nevertheless, that is what the Scriptures teach. Sanctification, I say, has many different word, uh, meanings to it, and not every word, of course, refers to the cleansing of the depraved nature as Byram has explained here, but it is a part, and it is one of the meanings of sanctification, to make holy, to pure, chaste, and clear. And so this work, of the work of cleansing the depraved nature, is the work of the Holy Spirit in the experience of entire sanctification. And it is contemporary, with the Holy Spirit's baptism. Now, you don't have to talk in tongues to receive the Holy Spirit. And the talking in tongues is not a witness to a Christian that he has received the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a witness, I say, to the believer, but to the unbeliever. Whenever Paul, or, or Peter rather, was called to go up to Caesarea, to enlarge Cornelius more fully of the gospel, we read there how that whenever Peter was explaining to them the things of God, the Spirit of God came upon them. Now, there were some unbelieving Jews with Peter. Now, they believed on Christ, yes, but they were unbelievers in the sense that they did not believe that the Gentile world could receive the Holy Spirit. And so they did speak in another language. Now, it was not jibber-jabber. It was a definite language that the people heard, and some of them understood, for they realized and knew that they were magnifying God. Nowhere does the Bible speak of us talking in an unknown tongue. The word unknown in our King James Version of the Bible is in italics, which tells us that the translators in 1611 added that word thinking 
that it would help understand, make people understand better, but in reality, it has added to confusion. There is no language that cannot be understood by some people somewhere. Otherwise, it is not a language. And so again I say, we do not have to speak in some unknown tongue as an evidence that we have received the Spirit of God. What we do have to do is to present ourselves a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Now the third word in our text today is preserved in Jesus Christ. Preserve means, in part, to keep from harm, damage, danger, evil. Also, to guard from loss or injury. This word speaks of our assurance in Christ. We are being carefully guarded in Christ. Each saint of God has a guardian angel. Yes, that's what the Bible teaches. Each saint of God has a guardian angel. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 4.18, The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Paul had the assurance that as long as he lived the Christian life, as long as he obeyed the word of God, then he would be preserved in Christ. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Second Timothy 4, 18. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. That's Psalm chapter 121, verses 7 and 8. And that little psalm is a very beautiful psalm, and it has some very meaningful words in it, not just the verses 7 and 8 that I have read, but there are other verses there that are very encouraging to the child of God, and the assurance is there that the Lord will preserve us. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out, and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Now that doesn't mean that a person cannot backslide. It simply means that as long as we keep ourself, our will, submitted to God, the Lord will keep us. He is able to keep that which we have committed unto him. The Lord is able to give us victory, even though the trials and the tests of life do come, and there are difficult situations to face, yet the Lord will preserve us, He will keep us, He will give us grace, for He has promised He would never leave us nor forsake us. Paul said he was persuaded that the Lord is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. Again, Second Timothy, this time verse 12 of chapter 1. And so again I say, God will keep that which we permit him to keep if we will but put ourselves in his hands. He is able to keep that which we have committed unto him against that day. Now Jude said, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And that's verse 21 of Jude. God will do his part if we will do ours. Kept by the grace of God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit, preserved by God's might and God's power. That is a reality to everyone who will surrender themselves to God when he calls them and consecrate and dedicate themselves a living sacrifice to God. God will indeed 
preserve them against that day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of sharing the truth with this precious congregation today. We are thankful for each one in our congregation, and we trust the songs and the message has proven to be a blessing to their hearts. Now we are asking that you'll bless the word and it will bring forth fruit to your honor and to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You have been listening to the Way of Truth broadcast and we're certainly thankful that you've been a part of our congregation and we would be thankful if you would take time to write and let us know that our broadcast service is a blessing to you. And our mailing address is The Way of Truth Broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. That's The Way of Truth Broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. Now our email address is true at fred.net, true at fred.net. We also have a fax number, 301-739-7173. And we invite you to visit our webpage. There you will find a number of our broadcasts if you missed any. You may also read our monthly Way of Truth magazine, and you can join us for our services as they are broadcast live over the internet. Now our mail, our webpage address is www.wayoftruth.org www.wayoftruth.org You may also find a place there on our webpage where you can send us a message. www.wayoftruth.org And now this is Alvin A. Craig. We do thank you for being a part of our congregation today, and we're thankful for the privilege of sharing the gospel with you, and we'd like to invite you to tune in next week. Whenever the Lord willing, we will be coming your way over this station with another Way of Truth broadcast. Until then, may the blessings of heaven rest and abide upon each and every one of you is our sincere prayer.